All right, guys, this is assignment 45. Uh, it starts out pretty simple. I just said basically fill in the blanks on the detail, and this is the answer, so most of the things were blank. Uh, and then where I got into trouble is where I said I tried to make it a question about vapor barriers, um, and I was a little bit out of my element with this masonry construction. So let's talk about vapor barriers, uh, what they mean and where they should go. So first off, my question was, if this wall is located in Buffalo, New York, do you think the water barrier doubles as a vapor impermeable barrier? And my answer was no, because I was trying to get to the point of uh, that the vapor barrier goes on the warm side, and I was assuming that the inside of the building was the warm side and not necessarily just the inside face of that insulation. Uh, but if we look at Joe Lestebrook's, or Joe Stebrook's perfect wall, and I'll put a link to this in the assignment, that's basically what we have here. Um, if you look at all these layers, you've got the same thing. We've got brick and airspace, rigid insulation, and then we've got our weather barrier right here. And that's basically going to stop all of our water and all of our vapor right along that line. Uh, if you try to think about where it would go on the interior face of this block wall, there's really no place for it to go. Like, what would you vapor barrier right there and then around this thing it's not really constructible so it really only makes sense right there so I'm going to read directly from a building science corporation website this is the perfect wall and it says this is arguably the most durable wall assembly available to architects and engineers it is constructed from non-water sensitive materials and due to the block construction has a large moisture storage capacity it can be constructed virtually anywhere in cold climates, condensation is limited on the interior side of the vapor barrier as a result of installing all of the thermal insulation on the exterior side of the vapor barrier. So what he's talking about is, and this is the heart of the issue, is where's moisture and where is it going to condense? So let's say we've got a cold climate. Let's say it's 30 degrees out here, and let's say it's 70 degrees in here. What we have is we've got warm air is going to be is where the moisture is going to be. The cold air is going to be dry. And so where you've got moisture meeting cold temperature, you're going to get condensation. So what he's saying is that since the moisture is in here and it's going to condense right along this line, uh, that's, that's sort of mitigated by the fact that the insulation out here is warming up this 30 degrees, right? So if the temperature is 30 degrees, here and it's 70 degrees here it's coming through the brick the temperature is going up slightly because the brick has like a little bit of r value and then it's coming through the air gap and not doing much and then through the insulation the temperature is rising significantly to get to 70 degrees and so it's not going to be as cold at the vapor barrier as it was if it was just straight up on the outside all right let's continue reading so in hot climates any moisture that condenses on the exterior side of the vapor barrier will be drained to the exterior so what he's saying here is, let me get a new trace. If it's the other way around, if it's a hot climate, so let's say it's 90 degrees outside and it's 70 degrees out, out here, the temperature is gonna be at 90, it's gonna start going down through the insulation, it's gonna go down a lot and it's gonna be 70. So then the moisture is gonna condense on the exterior face, still at the same line, but on the exterior face. And that's not a problem at all because you're outside of the block, you're outside of your building, and so any moisture that condenses can just fall out straight through the drainage cavity, just like rain does. All right, so here's a better example, and this I saw on the Facebook on the, uh, the Young Architect ARE group. Someone posted this question, and I don't know where this is from. Uh, but this is a good question that sort of gets to the point. So in the detail above, from an air-conditioned building in a hot, humid climate, where should the vapor barrier be located? So let's say it's 90 degrees outside. So it's 90 degrees, it's hot and humid, and it's going to be 70 degrees inside, and it's dry because it's air-conditioned. We'll talk about that in a minute. So where should the vapor barrier be located, A, B, C, or D? So if I'm looking at this, there's two things. One, we just say, okay, it has to be on the warm side. Um, and two, talk about constructability. So right away, I'm going to say, it's not going to be B because how would a vapor barrier even go in between your studs, right? You've only got 16 or so inches in there and you've got your bad insulation. So it's obviously not B. And C, you know, that could be on the warm side, but that really doesn't make much sense. Um, have you ever seen a wood framed stud wall with, with a vapor barrier attached straight to the studs before you put the sheathing on? Like that's just not really constructible. 
So then you're left with A or D. And so D is obviously on the warm side. That's going to be correct. A could be done. You can put your vapor barrier right there on the inside face of the stud before you put up your jip board, but that's wrong for this climate. So the correct answer is obviously going to be D because it's on the outside, even though this is a terribly drawn detail. Your vapor barrier is going to go somewhere right along there. Um, so let's say you did put your vapor barrier. Let's say you're in a hot climate with air conditioning and you put your vapor barrier at A. What would happen? The temperature is 90 degrees. It's going to get down to 70 through the wall. So it's coming here. It's dropping. So it's not as bad. But then you're getting condensation right here inside your stud cavity. So that's a terrible place for condensation because that's just going straight in your insulation. That's going in your studs. Uh, and that can rot out your wall. And that's not necessarily the greatest cause of uh, stud wall decay, but it's not a good place for it. If you have your vapor on the outside, all that vapor, all that condensation is happening on the outside and supposedly can dry to the outside. Although this does not appear to be um, a rain screen wall or a vented wall, so that's a whole other issue. But the, the, uh, the vapor barrier will be on the warm side here. So a bigger question when you get these kind of things, it's not necessarily only gonna be about point on your wall where the vapor barrier goes, but it's gonna be considering what happens if you don't have it or what if it's in the wrong place. So let's say we look at our, you know, let's say we look at this wall and let's say there's no vapor barrier, right? There's no water barrier. What's gonna happen? You're gonna have water coming in through the brick. You'll have water probably getting in through the insulation or attached, you know, in through the insulation and it'll probably still get stuck right around here or get sucked up into the CMU. And then uh, if it's cold, it could ice, right? Let's say if it's a cold climate, let's say it's 90 degrees outside and 70 degrees inside. What's gonna happen is wherever there's moisture that's meeting the cold air, it's still gonna condense. And if it's a cold, cold climate, it could ice. And one more thing that's slightly related, but uh, I talked about how air conditioners dehumidify, right? If you've got 70 degrees air conditioner, it's also gonna be the dry air because ACs dehumidify. And so that's one of the problems with having uh, an air conditioner HVAC system that's not properly sized. If it's oversized, it's gonna cool down your space too quickly and it's not gonna be an operation long enough to dehumidify the space. And so you can also get moisture problems there. I don't know if that's a kind of a test question, but that is an issue with oversized HVAC systems is that they don't dehumidify enough because they don't run long enough uh, really to do their job because they can cool down the place so quickly. So I know this is all over the place. Um, I was thinking about changing the assignment. I think I'm gonna leave it like it is and just put this video up and put some notes on the addendum page. I think the only thing at this point left to do is listen to my MySpace profile song from 2006. Chicago, I used 